While debate rages about conditions at the Nauru Detention Centre, a Queensland inquest is highlighting some of the troubles with onshore detention. The coroner is examining the death of a young Hazara man at the Sherga Air Force Base in remote far north Queensland. And documents released to 7.30 show he had traces of an antidepressant in his system, a drug not found in his medical records. Peter McCutcheon reports. It, yes, this is also uh, his thoughts who he is. Hassan Ghulam has been studying the diary of an asylum seeker, a 20-year-old man who apparently committed suicide. The scribblings range from simple English exercises to accusations of murder and obsessive repetitions of different names. You know, Mirdad, Mir Hussein Dad. So this suggests to you that he was in a delusional state? Yes, identity, a very typical um, uh, uh, example of identity crisis. Maqdad Hussain was found hanged in his dormitory in far north Queensland in March last year. It's the latest in a series of deaths, raising questions about the level of mental health care in detention centres. With the New South Wales coroner last year criticising a health provider in relation to three men who committed suicide at the centre at Villawood. I think the challenge that the system faces uh, at the moment is considerable. Um, whilst we certainly have a, a greater number of mental health staff uh, within the system, we have to be aware that there are limitations um, as to what can actually be treated within detention. Maqdad Hussain was an ethnic Hazara, a group often targeted by the Taliban in Afghanistan and on the Pakistani border. The Queensland coroner is now trying to work out why he would take his own life after travelling thousands of kilometres and spending four months in detention. This inquest offers a rare glimpse into life behind the fences of Australia's most remote onshore detention centre, the Sherga Air Force Base on Cape York Peninsula. Everyone in the detention centre develops mental health problems, not just Mekdad. Everybody has the same problem, but some people are stronger than others. Mohammed Masumi was a friend of the deceased and the last one to have seen him alive. He blames the apparent suicide on uncertainty and isolation. For all of us, it's a gradual death. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Yet the initial mental health assessments of Maqtad Hussain judged the young Hazara to be a low risk. But after only two months in detention in Sherga, his diary documents a rapid mental decline. My dead body is transferred to my country, Pakistan. It almost sounds like a suicide note, doesn't it? It, 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 well, it is so, yeah. Hassan Ghulam is a leader of the Hazara community in Queensland and visited Sherga just after the tragedy. And one thing caught his attention the alleged widespread use of medication. I was told the people were queuing during the evening and there were boxes of medication and then one after the other they were taking their medication either on the spot there or uh, taken to their room. Now most witnesses have so far told the Maqtad Hussain inquest that medication in the sugar centre is strictly supervised but several exhibits released by the coroner to 7.30 reveal an anomaly. An autopsy found Maqtad Hussain had taken a prescription-only antidepressant, yet a summary of his medical records state he received no prescribed medication. Well, that sort of situation obviously needs to be um, quite clearly uh, investigated. The impact of medication is number one. He was depressed. There is no record of any therapy and the introduction to psychologists, to psychiatrists. And coronial hearings in Cairns last week also revealed gaps in the detention centre's system of welfare checks. The centre manager, employed by the services company Serco, admitted one of his staff had failed to check on Maqtad Hussain when he missed a meal on the day he died and had falsely recorded this visit had taken place. The revelation angered Mohammed Masumi. I give you my personal opinion. If Serco was doing its duty thoroughly, I'm sure he would still be with us today. And he says this is not an isolated case. 
At the beginning it was okay, but later on they became very reluctant. Nobody was worrying about you. Now Serco has disputed this and told the coroner that detainees were often asleep and weren't aware welfare checks had been carried out. In a statement to 7.30, a company spokesman said, Mr Hussain's death was a tragedy which was deeply upsetting for our staff and the people in our care at the Sherga Centre. Our thoughts are with his family and friends. We are committed to preventing people from coming to harm and will continue assisting the Queensland State Coroner. As television ABC program 730 have to see Our interview with Hassan Gulam was interrupted with a telephone call from the Pakistan Afghan border. It was Maqdad Hussain's cousin. Hassan Ali explained how his family believes Maqdad Hussain was murdered, and they find it hard to believe the disturbed writings in the diary. He's saying this uh, notebook. Uh, could be also from his enemies, right. you know, written by his enemies. Right. But the Queensland Police investigation found there were no suspicious circumstances. Most of the witnesses before the inquest say Maqdad Hussain was a quiet young man who showed no abnormal behaviour, although there were some reports of him becoming increasingly withdrawn and eating less in the final week of his life. And mental health experts say the lesson here is that detention centre health staff need to be vigilant. People are obviously screened and assessed for mental health problems, but that needs to be uh, repeated. There are many reasons why these are high-risk environments. 